Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another Frugal Follies tutorial for you. And opportunity has arisen for me to talk about herbs and spices. Basically, I've got a mate who's been posted abroad, yeah, so they're having a massive kitchen clear out, yeah, because the entire family's going. So I, I picked up all their herbs and spices, including this rather, yeah, this has been on the top of a cupboard for a long time. But anyway, Picked up a load of herbs and spices. Now, this tutorial is specifically going to be talking about herbs, okay? When it comes to spices, such as curry spices, paprika, ground cinnamon, yeah, which are all these, they make excellent fine powders for ground cover. The issue is, yeah, one, they're not inert. They will react with PVA, etc. You know, the colours will bleed out of them and bleach into everything else. On top of that, yeah, they smell... The, I'm not going to say they smell horrendous because they smell quite nice, but in the sort of quantities you'd be using, they'll be very overpowering, which means they're going to be left out for donkey's ages to dry out. So they are of use, and I will talk about them in the future, yeah, but I'm not using them for this project. And to be perfectly honest, yeah, when it comes to using really fine pigments, I prefer builder's pigments, fine sands, that sort of stuff, simply because it's inert and it doesn't smell, and, you know, you can get it in far bigger quantities for far less. But you can use them for basing. So I just wanted to mention that before we get stuck in. So... Moving the, the spices aside, it's not a spicy one today, it's a herby one. Okay, herbs. Now, typically when you see them in the shop, they look very dry. At best, you know, this, watch out, this parsley. That's about as green as they get. Okay, now obviously herbs are little plants. My mum's always had a herb garden and I have fond memories of constantly being sent out every dinner time to grab some, some parsley or grab some mint or sage or or whatever she particularly wanted out of the garden, yeah, for whatever she was cooking. Now, obviously, you know, for packaging and for mass distribution, you can't have, you know, fresh, so everything's dried out, which gives it this really nice dry, summer dry, I should say, sort of texture to the herbs. So let me pick these up. So what sort of things are we looking at? Well, typically, you want your typic, typic, your typical English herbs, okay? So your parsley, your basil, what's that? That should be coriander. That isn't British, I don't think. Coriander isn't British, it's Indian, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a good leaf base. Okay, thyme. Yeah, that's a bit twiggy. That's mint, isn't it? No, that's more parsley. That's mixed herbs. That's a special, special mixed herbs. That's the equivalent of going to a curry house and getting like, you know, I will have the special curry. And then you've got mint. Mint's quite a dark one, okay? Now, I'm, the reason I'm mentioning the colours right off the bat is because, you know, we're going to be looking, I'm going to be showing you a few techniques with these. What we're going to do is quickly show you these, and then what we're going to do is I'll show you a few techniques to apply them to colour and that sort of stuff. So, on top of here, we've got more basil. Yeah. Marjoram, yeah, paisley, parsley, paisley, I can never get it right. Yeah, but we've got a wide mix. What you want to be avoiding is things like, you know, the peppercorns, okay, things like uh, coriander seeds, uh, rosemary's a bit, what you call it, rosemary's sort of a stalky plant, but it's a bit aggressive for what we want to do, it's a bit big if you know what I mean. Yeah, you could throw it into a blender or simply smash it up a bit to get finer bits and it'd work. But generally, you know, you've got twig elements in the others, so don't worry about it. Also, things like fennel seeds, way too big. Way too big, guys. A bit of shine on that. Okay, so where else we got here? Okay. Oregano. Yeah. Wood chippings. And more mint. Okay, so you've got the mints, which are the nice dark ones, your paisleys. And then you've got your more dried out ones there and obviously over time yeah they will dry out more which is why they're not inert you know they, they do change over time now very quickly another great source yeah is curry leaves you can buy bags of these in the supermarket or if you've got uh, an Indian supermarket you know an Asian supermarket somewhere near you yeah these are great now they are quite large yeah but you can literally smash them up in your hand or blend them and get them to much smaller bits, which work really well as leaf and ground foliage. Yeah, so if I bring that up, 
Yeah, it's just a matter of blending them, guys. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to point the camera down. Yeah, I'll get a few of these out to show you the sort of ground coverings, and then once we've done that, we'll get into some techniques. Yeah. Okay, and this is mint. Obviously, it's dried out quite a lot, but if you look at it, it is a really nice ground cover. Remember, I'm looking at this for sort of like the jungle ground cover in our what you call it in our big Burma build. Okay, moving on. We've got coriander leaf. Yeah, which is obviously a more leafier. Yeah, this is because it's the leaves that are chopped up in this. Okay, whereas this is generally the whole plant. Yeah, much finer. Yeah. Right, let me just bring these down a bit. Now you'll notice I'm just rubbing them together. That's because that's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to make a mix with these when I put, put apply them on. Yeah. This is parsley. Yeah, much thicker. I mean, obviously you can put them through grounders, that sort of stuff. Another great green colour, but remember, this isn't colour set. So just because it's this colour now out of the pot, when you hit with PVA, it can change. Yeah, because it isn't inert like normal flocks. Okay, and then finally the basil. Yeah, once again, mixture of leaf and stalk in this one. Yeah, really nice and light. Yeah, the lighter they are, yeah, the more they're likely to hold that colour. Yeah, the, when you get colour bleaching, it's typically the green chlorophyll out of the leaves when it gets re-soaked. Okay, but the lighter ones, they will stay lighter and they will sort of hold the colour a lot better. But it's not guaranteed, guys, you know what I mean. But as you can see, texture-wise, if I just mix them all together. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at that for a floor texture. You can't replicate that with flock. You can't rep replicate with, you know, foam and clump foliage and that sort of stuff. Yeah, because this is natural. Okay, it's little leaves, ground down, you know. You can't, you simply can't beat it. Now, this is the mix that we're going for, our basic for, so mint, basil, parsley, and coriander leaf. Yeah, and that's what we're gonna be using as our ground cover. So I'm gonna knock a batch of these up and then we'll come back and we'll start gluing them down, yeah? So guys, I've put down six patches of PVA. Yeah, a little bit watered down with a wet brush, yeah. It's important when you're using herbs and spices and a thicker mix that you use a PVA or a water-based glue, typically PVA. Yeah, don't use a contact glue because you need the moisture to carry that glue through and actually adhere the thicker layers. Yeah, contact glues will only stick down what they touch to, so when you're using this stuff, you'll get a very thin layer. Now this is my mix of herbs, yeah, and I've got to say, not only does it look lovely, yeah, it smells lovely. And all I'm going to do is sprinkle them on. Yeah. And I'm just going to crack on and just literally just sprinkle these onto these patches. They're all sprinkled on now. All we've got to do is leave it to dry. And just for one quick thing I forgot to mention at the start. Listen, guys, this I, I know what you want because I know straight away I'm going to get loads of comments. People saying, you can use this, you can use that, you can use this. Yeah, there's loads of other different materials you can use to make your own flocks, etc. And your own scatter material. I'll cover those in future videos, guys. This one is just specific about herbs and spices. Okay? Or specifically, herbs. Right, we'll leave those to dry. Yeah, we'll come back, brush them off, we'll then seal them, and then we'll take it from there, guys. Okay? See you in a minute. So the PVA is pretty much dry now, and it's time to shake off our excess. Yeah, so I've just put a little bit of newspaper under there, and then... There you go. Give it a good shake so you can see actually what how much sticks down. Right, <laughs> this is going to get messy. Right, fold that across to there. Grab that just as it is, and don't drop it, Bose. Right, drop that onto there. Just very quickly, put that on there so I don't mess up the kitchen. Right, here we are. Right, let me move those so you can see them. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, yeah, our what you call it, our herb mix has gone down, and it has given us a really realistic ground covering. Yeah, there's lots of lovely colours in there. 
okay it's undulated i.e it's a lot bumpy and it's it's a good texture and that's because it's a water-based glue yeah so the water has been soaked up through the watch clip through the the lower herbs and then stuck to the higher levels now obviously yeah it's not stuck down completely yeah where it's relatively thin it is yeah but it's not sealed and that's what we need to do next now what i want to do is very quickly i'll get this piece of cardboard and i'm going to cover up just one of these in fact i'll cover up this one yeah and just so that that doesn't get that doesn't get any watered down pva on it okay so we can maintain a control so i can see show you the difference of you know what it does now we're using a really thin down mix of water down pva this is thin down mix of water. yeah right okay it's about one to ten ratio of water with a touch of dish detergent in there to act as a flow aid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give these a coating of pva now right so they're all sealed up okay uh, we'll come back once this is dry and then we can start looking at how to sort of texture it, how to watch it, colour it with washes and paints and that sort of stuff. So, I'll see you when it's all dry guys, just very quickly. There we go, all nice and clean. Right, see you in a minute guys. So the PVA is dried now and immediately you can see a vast difference between the unsealed pe herbs and the sealed herbs. Now I, haven't, I have given these a quick brush off with this and basically what I meant is I'll come along and any last little sticky up bits that weren't really sealed, I've brushed off. And you can see straight away the difference. I mean, that's darker. This is a thinner application, okay? And if I rub it, yeah, it powders down. Yeah, whereas if I rub that, it's pretty solid. Yeah, now, on top of that, you could hit this with another coating of watered down PVA and that would, what you call it, that would you know, make it even harder. But it's good enough for what we need to do with it now. What do we need to do with it now? Well, we're gonna have a bit of a play, yeah? Uh, we've got some washes. <clears throat> so first off, Games Workshop wash. And what I'm gonna do is work through these other patches and show you some of the effects you can get. Now we've covered using washes with flocks and stuff before, so this is no surprise to you, but I wanted to show you the sort of effects you can get, you know, by using just simple paints and washes. So. Yeah. So this is the GW one. Okay. Next up, we've got our uh, oak brown that we made in the washes tutorial. Come on, have you come? And for that one, we'll go on to this one. Okay, so that was our oak brown, yeah, that we did as a wash. Yeah, the, the best way to apply these sort of things actually is with either an atomizer or with an airbrush. You get a far better spread and there's less chance of dislodging the actual herbs and herbs with your, watch or with your brush as you're doing it and reactivating the PVA as you're messing around. But, you know, we're, do, we're doing it quick and easy here. Right, so on this one, yeah, we're going to go for some of this, okay? Now, this is a Dulux Espresso Shop, but it's a nice dark brown. It's also an incredible, look at that. That's horrendous Dulux. Yeah, put that down there and push that skin back down there. This pot's been sitting in my drawer for years. Right, let's give this a go. Yeah, water it down a bit. Because obviously this is straight out of, this is, you know, this house paint, so we need to water it down a bit. Yeah. So that sort of consistency. Yeah, and we're going to spread this over here. Okay, that's the espresso shot done. Now it does look very bright at the minute, but remember, yeah, it's because it's been diluted down, it's wet, yeah, it will dry completely differently. Now finally, yeah, what I've got here is some intense truffle. And I quite like this, because it's quite a light color. It looks like dried mud. So what I want to do is give this a go as well. Okay then, 
So, that's all our watch colour washes on. We've got the watch colour Agrax Earthshade on there. We've got our own custom wash on there. We've got the Intense Truffle, basically a really light cream sort of brown on there. And then a dark brown on there. And what we're going to do now is leave them to dry. Yeah, and what we'll do is we'll come back once these are all dry and I can show you the results, yeah? All right then, let's crack on. So guys, these have all dried now and we're ready to take a look at them. And a quick rundown, yeah, obviously we had our just glued down stuff, we had our sealed with PVA, Agrax Earthshade, our own custom Pro Terrain wash, and then the Intense Truffle, yeah, uh, paint thin down and the Espresso Shot paint thin down. Basically, light mushroomy, creamy sort of colour, a nice dark one. Okay, very quickly running through. Obviously, you know, the washes are translucent, they're thin that much, so, you know, the green still shines through, whereas the paints, they're more opaque, they have a higher pigment counter, they also have a higher watch uh, acrylic binder counter, which means these are tougher. Yeah, but these have blanketed out the greens more than the actual translucent washes. The Agrax Earth shade, that's giving it a bit of a rotten look. Yeah, obviously there's various other shades that you could use. I don't recommend using this stuff for doing big terrain projects. If you're doing a few bases or a few scatter bases, then it saves mixing up some custom stuff. If you're gonna be doing, what do you call it, uh, large areas, then you really wanna be mixing your own washes. And like I said, you know, video on that, I threw a link up earlier. Uh, especially because you can put these better through airbrushes than you can with the watered down paints. Yeah, I quite like the, the results of our watch colour, our oat brown wash. So I'll be using that quite a bit on the jungle. You can definitely see the difference between, you know, the untreated and the treated. Moving on to our paints, we've got a very light version. And I know this seems crazy, but this will work very well for dry mud in paths and clearings and etc. and going up towards villages. With the Burma build, I'm very much thinking of keeping it sort of post monsoon, monsoon season where it was very wet in the jungle but starting to dry out on the land because it, it maximizes the modeling opportunities for me. Uh, it also fits in with when the actual Chindits did their operations, etc. Now with the darker shot, obviously you can see this really sort of matted down, muddy looking ground cover. And it's worked really, really well to be perfectly honest. So I'm really happy with it and I, that's the one I'll be using for the majority of my bases. Basically this around the edge and this around the, the centre with the scrub mix. And then I'll be using this as the baseboard cover so that all the jungle elements fit nicely together. Along with other flocks and foliages as you can imagine. Right, that's a basic guide to using herbs as ground cover. So remember we basically just got all our herbs together yeah, mix them all together to get a really nice, fine ground cover. And it is really realistic because at the end of the day, it's real. Okay, it's real plants, you know what I mean? Yeah, we, we covered, you know, the reasons why you need to seal it. And, you know, because, you know, just gluing it down isn't good enough. Obviously, with putting the washes on, it's toughened them up. Yeah, with putting the paint on, it's toughened it up even more. Okay, so that's virtually ready to play on. If you're really concerned, you can still seal it. We talked about the translucent effects of the washes and the opaqueness of the thin down paints. And I think we're pretty much good there, guys. So that's, you know, that's using herbs, guys. You'll be seeing a lot of this coming up. And not only does it look gorgeous, it smells beautiful, it really does. Anyway, guys, obviously, like it if you like it. Uh, if you've got any comments, any experience, any questions, throw them in the comments, guys. That's what they're there for. Yeah, uh, as always, if you know someone who this will help, you know, find this useful, give them a share to them. Yeah, and then finally, if you really like what I do, you know, guys, there's always the Patreon thing if you want to help me keep going. Yeah, don't worry if you're not going to, because you know I will crack on regardless. Right, in the meantime, we've got a little bit more preparation to do for the Burma build, then we're going to get deep into the jungle, guys. So, I will see you then. All the best, yeah? Terra.